In this video, I'm going to briefly demonstrate how to set up a Nismatronic assay tune for speed density and how to set up uh, things like your map sensor, intake air temp, and wideband in the setup screen. Um, right now, I have an SR20DET uh, red top hybrid uh, with an Omni 4 bar, uh, 1200 CC injectors, and an LC1 wideband. Um, to set all this up, it's pretty simple. Um, you just go over to the setup tab setup and go into sensors. Uh, you see everything listed here uh, for the map sensor. We'll go in here. Uh, I have it set as custom because um, using the Omni 4 bar settings, um, if we go in here and select it, you'll see it's 31 and 838. With this particular car, that didn't match the actual engine load uh, displayed on a, a, another map sensor or uh, on the boost gauge. So uh, to, the, to get to read properly, uh, we went down and selected custom and changed it to 0 and 800. Um, each car is going to be a little bit different depend depending on grounding uh, and, and your individual setup so don't be surprised if you have to select custom and uh, you know change the offset and scaler just a bit to get it to read uh, just as you would like. Uh, so that's how you set up the map sensor. It's incredibly simple. Um, you select um, the input that your map sensor is in uh, it can be MAF input and any of the ADC inputs, and then you can select the type and uh, offset and scaler. And to enable the actual MAP sensor reading, uh, you, you click Enable MAP Sensor, and that will enable um, enable the MAP Sensor. Um, now we'll move on to Wideband. Same thing as the MAP Sensor, you have Enable Wideband, uh, click this to enable it. Uh, your inputs are O2 input through AD, all the ADCs. Uh, one note for the O2 input, it only reads uh, to 2.5 volts, um, so it would need a volt. Your your input would need a voltage divider. The wideband, I would definitely recommend running to the ADC input. That way, you get a, a true zero to five volt reading. Um, here, you can select your uh, wideband type. On this one, it's Innovate, so we have it selected as Innovate. Uh, filter, you really shouldn't have to change this value, um, but you can. That's just uh, the filtering for the the readings. And then you have an AFR offset. This AFR offset. Uh, takes into account any changes that you might see on your gauge compared to what you're getting on the uh, in the software itself. Um, you can you can change this as much as you would like uh, just to get it to match. Um, then we'll move on to your intake air temp sensor. Uh, you can enable the, the IET just like the others. Um, your input is EGR temp uh, through the ADCs. Uh, the SR20 DET uh, rear wheel drive ECUs uh, can all use the EGR temp input. This is uh, I be believe pin 26. Uh, on the ECU, um, and you can use this, um, you know, for your IAT input. All the other uh, ECUs, except for the California uh, G20 ECU, uh, will need to use the ADC inputs. Um, so if you have an SR20 DE, it's very likely you'll have to wire up your uh, IAT uh, via one of the inputs. Um, and here we have default temp, min voltage, max voltage. Uh, anything below this voltage will throw uh, an IAT code. Anything above the max voltage will throw an IET code. Um, maybe a filter and default temp. Uh, this is if uh, you know, say your your IET is not registering cr uh, correctly. Uh, you can still apply default temp, and that's what will, what it will default to uh, when it doesn't have a proper reading or it goes out of uh, out of range. Here you have your IET conversion table. Uh, this allows you to change uh, the temperature uh, depending on the voltage. So you can scale this table. Uh, if, if it's not quite right for what you're seeing, you can change this table to get it to, to read how you would like. Um, and you know that, that's just something that is going to be on a case-by-case -case basis where you go through and, uh, and change that table. Uh, most of them are going to be pretty close, but um, you know for, for whatever reason you have to change it, uh, you, you're able to here. Um, let's see. Uh, some of the other stuff that um, you, you guys might have questions with um, are the maps. Now, uh, there are four four uh, fuel maps here. You have set one primary, set one alternate, set two primary, and set two alternate. Now, you can switch between these maps by going to outputs and map switching. You can enable um, alternate maps. Uh, like on this one, I have enable alternate maps using the AC switch, and I'm also using the alternate injector size. Um, anytime that this, the AC switch is armed, uh, it will switch to the alternate set of maps. Um, and the alt, alt injector size is listed in the fuel trims. So if we go to fuel trims, fuel adjust, and injectors, uh, you'll see that 
the current injector size here is 900 and the alternate injector size is 1150. The reason for this is the current map is your primary map, uh, is your primary set one map. And that is using E85, so it requires 30% more or so of fuel. The alternate map uh, is for pump gas. So if you flick the switch, your AC switch, it switches to your alternate fuel table and then it uses your alternate injector size. So, so that's going to require 30% less fuel and that's why we have a bigger uh, injector size here. This allows you to have literally the same exact um, fuel map and just change the, the injector scaler basically whenever you switch maps when you're changing from pump gas to E85. If you look, our set one primary fuel is here and our set one alternate fuel um, fuel is here. If you look, the, the the fueling values are pretty close. They're not exact, but they're pretty close. And that's because we're, we're able to use the uh, alternate injector size to help scale uh, the two maps uh, accordingly. Uh, some of the other things you guys might want to use um, you know, in here are um, setting up outputs for VVL. I'll just go over that really quick. Um, if you go on the outputs tab, uh, you're going to want to use the generic output, generic output 1, uh, just enable it. Uh, you can use any, you know, anything you'd like. We'll just use, uh, let's say, AIV solenoid. Um, and we'll, you can just click enable. Uh, this is for RPM. So we'll do, say, a turn on at 4800, and we'll turn it off at 4600. Um, and you can use an arming input, which you really don't want to use for, for VVL solenoid, but you have the, uh, the option. And you can also switch to alternate or set 2 maps. So you can set it up kind of as a low cam, high cam map uh, for both, you know, fuel and ignition if you'd like to do that. So it'll switch to uh, the alternate or set two maps whenever uh, the output is engaged for a VVL solenoid. Um, we also have, um, I'll just go over the limiters real quick. Um, you go to the limiters tab, rev limit setup. Here you have your, your normal rev limit here. You can enable rev limit spark cut, which will cut spark um, during, during normal rev limit. Then you have your normal launch control here. Um, I'll just go over this real quick because this is how you set up the anti-lag and the launch control, control together. Um, as you see here, we have launch control at 4800 RPM. Uh, max speed for the launch control is 10. And launch speed resu resume, if it falls under 2 miles an hour, it will resume the launch control. If it's over 10, it will release it back to normal rev limit. Um, the anti-lag, um, normally you want to set it about 150 to 200 RPM below your launch RPM. So the min, R min RPM you want to set just below your launch RPM. Um, the min TPS, uh, we're just going to say above 50% throttle when launch control is active is when anti-lag is going to engage. Uh, when it engages, it does a fuel uh, compensation of you know, 10%, 1.10 is 10%, and it retards the ignition 20 degrees. Um, and here you can enable uh, anti-lag. And what this is going to do is help bigger tur turbos build some boost off the line. Um, you know, also makes shoots flames, does all kinds of crazy stuff. But uh, you can adjust this however you'd like. Be very careful with the ignition rec retard and the fuel comp. Um, th this can definitely damage things if you uh, don't know what you're doing. So start s start low and work your way up. Um, I wouldn't say going. I wouldn't recommend going any more than 30 degrees retard. 20 degrees should be, you know, pretty good for most parts. Uh, so you could start there. Um, so that's it for this little video. Um, I'll show you some more stuff and, and a couple others of how to dialogue, how to set it up, how to get your AFRs to uh, you know display on the screen, and and um, you know how to go from there.